Good morning, happy new year, and welcome back to Gershwin Woodcraft. Today we're going to use pen turning skills to make a wood turned stemmed wine glass. Let's go through the steps and have some fun. For today's project, I found this glass at Home Goods, and you'll notice what makes it so perfect is it's got a nice stem that's absolutely the same from top to bottom. I actually got a lot of funny looks in the store while I was going around with my calipers and finding glasses that had that feature. If it's got a taper, you're going to have a lot more problems gluing it all together. You're going to need to go down to your local hardware store and get various size brass tubes. You can need to go down to your local home goods or whatever store and pick up some wine glasses. You can also need to pick up bolts that match the inside diameter of the tubes. You'll need something to cut the glass. You'll need something to glue the glass, which in this case you really want a slow cure 30 minute epoxy because you can need a lot of time to get it all lined up. And then obviously you're going to need your lathe and woods and all that stuff as if you were turning a pen. The next step is we're going to cut the glass. So we put a little tape on it and we take a marker and we kind of just eyeball the center. Doesn't have to be perfect but you do want it to be basically in the center. We take a quick moment and talk about the safety because you are now going to be cutting glass with your Dremel and that's super dangerous. So you want to make sure that you have a good respirator, a full face mask, and I mounted an old box fan on a tripod here and I keep that blowing at full speed with the window open because the last thing you want to do is breathe in glass dust. It's only going to take a second, but let's make sure you live to make many, many wine glasses. Now that you've cut it, you can find the tube that best fits. You want the snuggest possible fit so that it's nice and straight. And in this case, it's 3 8 which is perfect since I have a 3 8 Now you're going to want to measure how big to make the pipe. So once you measure your length, you're just going to mark it off I add about a quarter inch just to give me some wiggle room. Then I'm going to put it in my little box and I'm going to cut it. Once you've cut it, you confirm everything is looking the way you want it to be. That looks perfect. I recommend that if you're going to do multiple glasses at once, you should put a little piece of tape and number the glasses so that the stems tops and the stems and tops all line up together. Now that you have your tube cut and ready to go, you're, you're into standard pen turning mode. Assemble the woods, drill the hole, glue it up as you would any normal pen that you would make. We're not going to go into that at all today. Now very luckily, since this is a three quarter inch tube for this glass, I happen to have bushings for a Clio pen that fit it perfectly so I can use a standard mandrel. But that will not always be the case. When I was making some other pen, some other glasses that had a much that had an eight millimeter hole, I did not have anything appropriate. So I had to go out and get myself a bolt, cut it off, fits in there, use extra tubing as the bushings themselves, screw it all in. And basically, I've made my own mandrel that I hold in to the lathe with a drill truck. So this is an opportunity for you to get really creative in what you're going to do. Okay, in this case, we're going to mount this in, get this ready to go. Get 
them nice and tight. For those of you who have no, just noticing, this is my new super duper lathe that I bought myself as a present. go looks nice and let's take a moment put on our safety equipment Okay, so here it is all finished up and ready to go. Although I am not a fan of the CA finish, I do use it in this one situation since these will ultimately be rinsed off in a sink. Obviously, they are not dishwasher safe, but I wanted that extra coating of CA. So, let's go assemble our cup. Okay, so now I'm going to just use a little piece of sandpaper to get that ready to receive glue a little bit better. And now I will put on my gloves and we will mix the glue. Yes, doctor. Remember, this is a two part 30 minute epoxy. I can't stress that more. Not five minute, not ten minute. The longer the time, the set time the stronger the bond and remember you're gluing the glass when you look up these glues it says for glass use a 30 minute epoxy I think I need to drop more of this Slide it in and work it in there. And I normally start with the top. Blah, 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 blah. Nice thing about the glass is all the excess glue very easily cleans off perfectly. Now we'll do the bottom. Now comes the trickiest part. Now I have luckily have my press is perfectly plumb. Don't ask me how that happened. So now I'm going to very carefully raise this up just to give it enough pressure to hold it still. There we go. Now it is still. We will do this, move it a little bit, make sure it's nice and plumb. Then we go this side and slide it a little bit. Nope, the other way. Then we do that side. Should be perfect. Check the front again. Smidge. Okay. Well, that's going to take about 30 minutes to dry. I don't want to wait for that. I think you get the general idea. This is a great project. I usually make matching sets to give as gifts. Everyone seemed to love it. Hope you have a great new year. Stay tuned for more videos and please check out KirschwoodWoodcraft.com. Thank you.